Oh yeah, that's super slow. I feel like it doesn't even want to get through this. Welcome into another episode of Well.com, everyone. Today, we're gonna try something that I've never even tried before. That's plasma cutting with different gases. Let's talk about it. We'll go ahead and start this video by saying yes, I do know that dry firing your plasma cutter is not necessarily good for the consumables themselves. You shouldn't do that, but it's kind of like picking up a drill and not doing that before you go doing drill stuff. I'm gonna do it. You've seen us use this plasma cutter. This is the Radner 45 amp plasma cutter. In every episode we've done it, we've used compressed air. Matter of fact, that's the only gas I've ever used when it comes to running this process. However, if you look in the manual for this same plasma cutter, it says permissible gases to be able to use is nitrogen on argon and compressed air. Now I had heard nitrogen was a good gas for plasma cutting, but I've only ever used it as a purging gas. Anyway, we're getting off subject at that point. So let's dive into it a little bit. The compressed air, again, we've talked about it, we've done it. It's pretty much gonna be your well-rounded process as far as for plasma cutting. You can cut any metal, it's pretty versatile. The biggest drawback to that is the fact that you need to have, of course, the compressor with plenty of air that comes from the compressor to a dryer. You wanna have an oil-free, moisture-free air in order to get the clean cuts that you're looking for. Another drawback is the fact that it is gonna form a pretty heavy oxide on things, especially like stainless steel. You'll see that really black, ugly layer of material and it typically has to be ground off. But but oxygen is actually gonna be one of the hottest, the fastest, and the cleanest cutting gases for plasma cutting. This is pretty much for thicker carbon steels, probably a lot more along the lines of automation than doing little stuff, 45 amps on a hand torch. But you can imagine that oxidation, that's no good for aluminum or for stainless steel, probably not gonna be a very good gas for those. What we're gonna be ended up using today are the two gases that I have on hand here in the shop, which is nitrogen and argon. They're inert gases, right? They're not extremely reactive, at least in their normal states. So it usually provides minimal oxidation or it will prevent oxidation, comparatively speaking, to oxygen or compressed air which has oxygen in it these two gases are really good for cutting stainless steels and aluminum however you get into thicker sections of material they're not as good for cutting making clean cuts so they're usually mixed with something else nitrogen could be mixed with a lot of different stuff air you can mix it with you can mix it with water you can mix it with oxygen you can mix argon with hydrogen and that ends up being a really sweet mixture for cutting thicker sections of metal especially for stainless steels and aluminum i didn't even know that there were actually dual flow plasma cutters. What I mean by that is this simple hand torch here. We have our gas coming out here and this is where it swirls around the electrode, forms that ionized gas and then pushes out that little nozzle and of course we make the plasma and make the cut. Whereas a two stage or two flow, double flow, dual flow, you have that same gas that's coming by the electrode swirling around and then you also have a shielding gas. So now that we know a little bit more about the gases that we can potentially use, let's go over to the plasma cutter. That's gonna be pretty simple to set up. We're gonna have to do something a little bit extra in order to run argon and nitrogen through this plasma torch. So like I mentioned, we're gonna be using this Radner 45 amp plasma cutter to cut four different materials. We've got some quarter inch aluminum, quarter inch carbon steel, and some schedule 80 one and a half inch pipe stainless steel, about the thickest stainless I have. As you've seen on a lot of our different videos, whether it be how to get clean cuts or maybe how to bevel with this specific plasma cutter, we always touch on the subject is you need enough air and you need it to be nice and dry. This machine needs about 90 to 145 PSI to that gas inlet and we need about 4.5 CFM as far as the flow rate. So we gotta be able to keep up with that. That should be on the front of your compressor and give you some of that information. That's a lot of PSI comparatively speaking to what you will get out of a gas cylinder. If you're using a regular, regular regulator that you would usually use for like TIG welding or maybe a MIG welding regulator, you can't use that on this bottle anymore. And you can't use a high flow regulator because usually those are reserved for oxygen and whatnot. But they do have high flow regulators for inert gas bottles. And in my experience, it looks a lot like this. This is a purge regulator for nitrogen. I use these back in the field for purging the insides of pipes to get all the oxygen out, even to do some back welding with the nitrogen itself. But that's how we're gonna be able to achieve those higher pressures as we can turn this thing up to about 100, a little bit past 100. So we're in that range and we should have plenty of flow to the actual machine itself. Now that we know all that, we can set up, we've got these materials over here. We can cut each one starting off with the regular, regular compressed air. 
I'm not gonna really harp on these first three cuts. Again, cutting with compressed air, we've got the machine set to 45 amps. We've got the right amount of gas to it. We're getting some gloves on. I've got my welding hood. This is that Lincoln 3350. You can set it to either your cut mode, which is gonna be good for plasma cutting. I don't think I've ever talked about it, but it does have an auto mode. So it's like set at, the, at 11, shade 11, but you can plus or minus the shade. So maybe you're going over here and you're welding something super bright. And so you'll go up to like a 12 or 13. Whereas if you're maybe switching over to some plasma cutting, it might drop down to a nine. So that's pretty sweet. Let's go ahead and make these first cuts. Uh, again, 45 amps, drag tip, quarter inch material. I had a couple little hiccups there myself. Let's try this aluminum. Cutting really well. Not seeing a whole lot of nasty dross. I don't know about cutting this right here, square or straight or whatever, but we're gonna just take a nip out of it. That was an ugly cut. It'll clean it up a little. Round stuff's kind of hard. After cutting stainless with compressed air, it just always looks nasty. This is pretty standard of what I'm used to seeing. Y'all too, if you've been watching the channel, we use the compressed air all the time. The carbon steel, very little dross on there. I could pick it off with my fingernail if there is a little bit on the back side. I had that one little skip in my travel speed. And the aluminum too, really clean cut. That is a pretty versatile process using compressed air for your plasma cutter. I would say it's probably what you'll see most often in shops and in the field or wherever. Correct me if I'm wrong, because I don't really know. If you are using those different gases in order to cut, is it automation? Are you doing it by hand? I'd love to know. And how thick of material are you cutting? Going into compressed air with stainless steel is probably one of the drawbacks to it is that nasty oxide. Even though these two cut really well too, the fact that we still have those oxides on the edge of this, especially on this stainless steel, is just no good to weld. It's really nasty. You're typically gonna find yourself with some porosity or just the weldability of it is just gonna be off. Anyway, something that we're familiar with, now what we're gonna do is take the compressed air out the back. We've got our regulator on our nitrogen bottle. We're gonna hook it up to the back of the plasma and we're gonna be running nitrogen first. Now, if I was a betting man, I would say that we're gonna get a lot of similar looks on this material. I would say it might look just a skosh shinier. And I'm guessing, I've never cut with nitrogen, so I'm excited to see what's gonna come of it. Let's see what it looks like on some aluminum. Color looks a little different. Didn't want to cut as good. Maybe that's the fact that I ran too fast. I did find out that nitrogen usually works best when you accompany it with another material. Let's make that cut one more time. Slow things down a little bit, see if that helps. The arc definitely has a crazier look to it. Let's try this nitrogen on carbon steel. I'm cutting a little slower, thinking that's what it needs. It's got a different coloration to it. I've got 76 PSI coming out of it, which is the same that we had for the compressed air. So I can definitely see why just plain nitrogen alone might be something to, to work, but I don't know if it's gonna be a better than just trying to do it with compressed air. Let's try this. I would say it definitely looks a lot cleaner as of a cut. It just feels like I have to cut a little bit slower. So I understand some testing and stuff would probably need to be done more, like see what other gases we can mix with the nitrogen or maybe change some flow rates in order to get some differences. I would say the biggest thing that I saw as a difference between just those few cuts that we've made is my cut speed was a lot lower 
for the pure nitrogen or the N2 that I was cutting with. If I had to guess, I would think that the oxygen that's in the compressed air is more reactive and causing a much more violent reaction to the material, making it a much faster process to cut. However, with the compressed air, we are seeing a, a little bit more of that oxidation on stuff. On my aluminum, if I look at both of them side by side, I really can't tell the biggest difference. I feel like the grain is a little bit bigger on the compressed air cut compared to the nitrogen cut, but I might be crazy. I did have to cut significantly slower in order to make that cut though. So for the carbon steel, I feel like the cut edge is significantly shinier. At least it's obviously shinier. It's got a little bit of coloration on there. I believe that's from the inert gas kind of shielding that carbon steel edge compared to oxidizing it a little bit heavier. And I would say that's probably a nice thing, right? Cleaner cut means probably ready to weld, but I had a bunch of stubborn dross on the backside of that cut too. So maybe adding something to that nitrogen will help with that dross, maybe cut a little bit faster, and then you'll have a cleaner edge to weld on. But I think the compressed air took it. If you ask me, if I just got to hit that with the grinder, I'm ready to go. Now for the stainless steel, again, the same kind of evidence here on the carbon steel is the stainless steel. We had a shinier, shinier edge compared to the compressed air cut. I don't know if I necessarily had to cut slower. I think I'm just cutting slow because it's not flat and it's round. Definitely a cleaner cut. The next thing we're going to try is using 100% argon. I don't have a lot of faith in the 100% argon. Uh, from what I've read, it needs hydrogen in order to be really valuable as a gas for cutting. After seeing what the nitrogen did, I don't have a lot of high hopes. All right, so we switched it over to 100% argon. No idea what this is gonna do. Oh yeah, that's super slow. I feel like it doesn't even wanna get through this. Super duper slow. It still broke off. The drossiest of the drossy. Let's try it on carbon steel. Yeah, it's, uh, you can see that tail doesn't want to just stay underneath us. Not a reactive enough gas against this material, I'm assuming. <laughs> it is putting a really, really narrow curve, but I'm having to go uber slow. And they only recommend using 100% argon for marking. That makes 100% sense for me right now, trying to cut this material. Company that with some travel speeds and whatnot, you probably got a good gas to run that's not going to cut all the way through. Again, I'm just guessing, but so far, this argon is not the ticket. I guess. Yeah, now looking at that, this is the most drossy part that we have. Everything had more dross and stuff on the top, surprisingly enough, not necessarily the stainless, but the aluminum, we have so much garbage all over it. I think that hydrogen addition to the argon probably be very, very helpful. Again, I wanna make sure we all are understanding here that these other gases that outside of compressed air that are supposed to be mixed and to do certain special applications are usually for way thicker metals for way faster travel speeds for way higher powers than your 45 amp handheld plasma cutter i think it's evident in this experiment today if you were curious about whether or not you could use your nitrogen or argon or compressed air which one you'd want to use i think you should probably just stick with the compressed air if you can the carbon steel is just absolutely drossy cut straight i guess Kinda. The stainless steel, however, was kind of comparable to the nitrogen. It seemed to be less drossy. I don't know, maybe the argon really likes stainless steel. I'm not really sure, I don't really know. But what I can tell you is for everything that I do in this shop here, I'm gonna stick to compressed air. Maybe I had the plasma cutter out and I had the nitrogen, I would probably run some nitrogen for some thinner materials. Everything else is outside of the scope of my work. I think that's what this YouTube channel is really all about, is just testing the whys of which these manuals or the books all say that you can or should or could do things and then putting it into an actual hands-on experiment and just actually seeing why. Because someone could tell me, yeah, yeah, you could use nitrogen all day or you're only allowed to use compressed air when plasma cutting. And I say, feh, there's other options out there, but maybe it's not actually what I need. If you're interested in learning more about the Radner 45 amp plasma cutter or maybe the regulator that gives you some high flow, onto your inert gas bottles. You could probably even run argon off those too. All the links that you'd want to see are down in the description below. Give them a look. We might even have some discount codes down there for you too. We'll see you guys on the next weld.